How's it going, everyone? Hello. That's doing great. Yourself? Doing well. Good to hear. I'm expecting Andrea to join as well. Just give me a minute. Hello. Andrea. What's up? Just by sharing the notes. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Yep. Just share the link to the notes in the chat. No, this is pretty fast. Maybe we should kick off. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, for the record, and my name is Andrea Frittoli. I'm pronouncing him. I work for IBM. I'm in UTC. And welcome to the City Events Working Group. So, um, we have a usual agenda, um, follow up on action items, and then I added a couple of things that we were discussing in the past few meetings, but feel free to add to the agenda a couple new topics as we go. Um, so what the first thing is action items. So I had an action item for some times to, to put together a proposal for the, um, like custom events that the discussion started within the harbor proposal so i i wrote the proposal and i was planning on uh just going through it uh today i don't know if anyone had the opportunity to go through it beforehand i have unfortunately not been able to do that sorry <clears throat> no, that's all right but would it make sense if i um open it now and do more presentation. Yeah, that would be great, I think. Okay. okay. So then. So this view, I guess. All right. Um, So the context of this is CD events adoptions by existing tools and specifically existing tools that already um, send events and they want to adopt CD events, uh, but they want to then adopt CD events that are matching to events they already sent, uh, but maybe that there, there are no CD events for some of the events they sent today. And so what do we do with this? And this discussion started in the context of the adoption with the Harbor Container Registry. Um, they have a number of um, events related to artifacts that um, we now have or will soon have in, in CD event site. There's some events related to, to scanning artifacts that we might want to add to CD events, uh, but there are some other events which are really operational events. 
and uh, probably not a good fit for city events. Um, so how do we deal uh, with this kind of situation? And so the proposal here is to uh, add a few things to the specification. So first is add a kind of namespace for event types, dev.cityEventX, which is uh, yeah, recognize or part of the specification of city events. That is not complete event type, it's just a namespace. Um, and the complete semantic of events that start with this namespace are defined outside of the um, city event specification. Then the second bit would be adding a schema URI property to the context. And this is something that I think you, Emil, suggested. I put a link to the issue there. Uh, some time ago. And the idea is that um, when sending a CD event, uh, a producer can attach a, a schema to it. And the schema must still comply with the CD event schema, but it might provide additional information. So it can provide more restrictive um, constraints on some of the fields, or uh, if there are fields that are not defined on CD event side, it could provide schema there for instance, for custom data or for part of the events that are not defined, especially in this case of the CD event X uh, events. Um, then CD events would provide a JSON schema for all these events that define how the contact looks like, what the subject looks like as far as we know on CD event side. And also, if we define the subject format for these events to be in the format of tool dash name, uh, so tool name, sorry, dash subject name, just to avoid type conflict. Um, and maybe before I go too much into more details here, I just wanted to show, I've got some examples down there um, of what this could look like. And I think that may be more easy to, to parse. Um, right. So one of the event on the harbor side is about um, quota exceeded. And so the um, event type for this would be dev city event X Harbor dash quota exceeded. Um, harbor of them would have to maintain a schema that includes this event type, the subject type, and the subject content. And what this the event could look like. Um, so this is the origin the cloud event that Harbor sends today. So they have a harbor quota exceeded with certain data, resources, repository, custom attributes, operator. So on CD events, it would look like uh, a normal CD event with a type, harbor quote exceeded with a certain version, which is maintained by harbor. Then the schema URI that points to some URL maintained by harbor again, where the full schema for this is available. The subject again has the, com the same base structure as CD events, so ID, source. Then the type is quota, and this is again defined by Harbor. And then the content itself is as a schema, which is defined by Harbor. So in this case, we have operator, resources, repository, similar to what we had before. And here, because they have custom attributes on the harbor side, they put some custom data here as well. But yeah, so this kind of the design of where these fields go would be on harbor side to decide basically. So that's that's it in a nutshell. Um, so in the proposal, um, I have a bit more uh, information regarding harbor and SDKs. Um, so I made kind of small case study for Harbor, listing all the events and for each event, what it would look like on CD event side. So we have artifacts events that we have today. So those are easy. We have scanning events that we could adopt in some format. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't think it's worth going through, through all of these details on Harbor side today. I just wanted to, you know, um, give the idea of what the, the proposal looks like in terms of the custom events. So uh, I'll stop here. Uh, is there any question or comment at this stage on this? To me, this sounds very interesting. I think it's 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 a good proposal. Um, so so the use case is not really that Harbor want to reuse their existing event infrastructure with SDKs and and producers, consumers, everything. It's just that they want to get that data into proper CD event structures, right? Uh, without then defining them as proper CD events core types, so to say. Yes, exactly. So basically they want to uh, say if a user selects CD events as format for their events, um, they want to have the whole range of events in the same format. Mm. Um, and I put some details here in the SDK. They're very minimal. But I mean, with the CD events SDK and maybe with some plugins or some mechanism to be better defined, it could be possible then just using the same SDK to produce and parse their custom events as well. I mean, with on 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 our side, we would be able to parse the context, the subjects, and everything because it's the same as usual. Um, but whatever is in the subject content, we would not be able to parse. We could validate against the schema they provide, but maybe in the specific languages that. There could be different ways, but the, we could provide in the SDK some way that can register a function that can be used to parse additionally the um, the subject content. Um, yeah, so but, yeah. a couple of, of more comments, I guess. <clears throat> one, one is that I guess this could be done, could be used for uh, event types which have not yet come into the standard and might not at all come in, but might eventually come in as well. So maybe there should be some some section here talking about what happens if the CD events project decides to incorporate one of these events in the, the core schema, so to say. Uh, how would such a migration be considered? Uh, what would that, how would that affect the producers and the consumers of these events? Uh, in these custom systems or specific, say, Harbor, for example, if we decide to bring in one of those events as proper city events, how does that then affect things? Uh, so that's one thing that I think would be worth maybe mentioning here and maybe have some some uh, discussion around in, in the document. Uh, the other one is, is about around uh, the links proposal as then has prepared. Uh, which mm -hmm. hasn't been merged yet, but it's, there is some going in. And there, I'm wondering, I think we should at least mention that here as well, but maybe not until the links proposal is, is merged, but uh, would there be any limitations, you think, on how uh, these custom events would link to core events and vice versa? Uh, would it make sense, make sense to elaborate on that in the document, you think? Um, yeah, it sounds, it makes sense. To be honest, I have not thought about that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I need to. Because I, I mean, for example, we have, we have the artifact events already in the spec and I would assume that the the events that Harbor would uh, come up with here in the custom environment, in some of those would like to like reference the, the existing artifact events, I would guess somehow. Uh, and mm. then how that could be done. Uh, I'm not sure if we can describe it already now since the link proposal isn't isn't merged, but maybe we can start thinking about it at least. Yeah, yeah. For instance, um, the quota exceeded event or quota warning event could be linked to an artifact upload. Uh, on, on their side, I can just an example that comes to mind. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, given that the context part is inherited from CD events, um, 
I would imagine there should be no specific restriction, but it's it's worth mentioning and discussing a bit about this mm -hmm. in the in the proposal. I think uh, whether it's okay or not to link between these types of yeah. events. That, yeah, that's just worth mentioning at least, and have some kind of consensus on. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, but otherwise, I think that, it looks good. Is that statement you made, Emil, based on? Um, well, first of all, <laughs> we need the link proposal done, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so that's one thing there. Um, the example that um, Andrea gave, I liked where I've got this particular event and it links to a core event. I like that idea. Um, limitations. I personally think that it's, um, open source and, uh, if you break it, you get to keep all the pieces. Um, so like maybe we advise, but I don't, don't like actually restrict what you can link to. I mean, it, it not because I don't think we shouldn't limit it because I think it's too much work <laughs> to mm. try and figure out how, you know, a custom event should or should not be linked. Yeah. So I, I would I think, say that, yeah, Go ahead. yeah, do you see what I'm getting at? Like, you know, here's, here's the best practice um, if, you know, this can go awry, if you do something silly, like link a, you know, uh, a quota overrun to a backup event, you know, but maybe in your brain that makes sense because the quota overrun was because you were running a big backup and it links back to a database event. And then you're like, okay, now I've got this chain of events. I, I don't know. I, I think we should just provide some adv advice and, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. Not solve a not solve a problem we don't actually have yet. Of course, of course. I think one thing that comes to mind, maybe that's why I brought it up, is if if we would consider these custom events as some kind of temporary events or things that might soon end up in the spec, but they're not there yet. So the the producer yes. of this system would would like to have them now. Then if you would link, say a uh, if you would like to link to one such custom event. Uh, what happens then when the custom event becomes a standard event? Uh, mm. So, so those kinds of, of things. So, I mean, you need to at least consider it from producer consumer perspective of these events that want to make sense of these links. I mean, they're not then with the links, they are not anymore just individual pieces of, of data. They have a relationship to some other existing data. Uh, and how should we deal with those when events might eventually go from being custom to being standardized. So we end up with the Kubernetes wackiness of API V1 beta, API V1, API V2 alpha, AVI, and, and that, you know, kind of that like graduation system. Uh, that's interesting. I, you know, I, I, I think we should talk about that at some point on how, um, a custom event could become a core event. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Um, uh, yep. I don't have anything on that right now, but uh, that's a, a very good point of the, how do you graduate into being, becoming a core event? And then what are you linked to when you become a core event? Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably need to use a couple of user stories around that to solve that one. Yeah, yeah. And I don't expect this document to sort that out before we approve this document, not at all. Maybe, maybe just mention that this is a an issue we need to discuss further on down the line. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, thanks for the feedback. And anything else uh, on this? I will try to, to add some updates based on um yeah based based on uh the comments so thanks for that um i guess the other thing just realize i didn't mention um in the document yet um is about versioning and i i just briefly mentioned but i mean custom events um they should 
follow this the same standard format that we have for events. So just showing here events would be could be zero one zero like we do for our event. Uh, but uh, th these versions, of course, would be up to the maintainer. Um, the CD event spec version, though, that would reflect the structure of the context and subject. So let's say um, today, I mean, this should probably be 030, not 010. Um, so if we define this event in a 030, um, version um, and then let's say in four, in 040 we introduce links if I want to benefit from links for this specific event then I would need to change the version here as well and I'll probably update the schema that is exposed with it but I, I will add some more um, about the the versioning it's would be very similar to to what we do on our side the other thing is that when we do a release on cd event side there's no immediate or direct impact on existing events because we, on existing custom events because we don't control them so it's up to the external maintainers to decide whether they want to upgrade their events to be compatible with the new cd events release if it makes sense. So what you're saying, if I try to interpret it, is it that the full context objects should always be conformed to a, a proper CD event context object, except for the version field that might be something else or, or did I misinterpret that? Yeah, so the, the context must be conformant with the uh, CD events. Uh, standard schema. And so we actually, we would need to provide uh, one of the bits that I had in the list before that we need to provide is a, a JSON schema for CD events where we only define uh, the structure of the context and the subject up to content, but we don't say what is within uh, the content itself. And also we don't provide an enum of valid types. So we keep it generic. And every any custom event that is defined out in, in the wild would need to be compliant with that JSON schema. And in addition, they would have their JSON schema provided by the third party that defines and what the type is and what the subject type is and what's what goes into the content and custom data. Yeah, so uh, I think that's a good idea to have a separate schema for the, should we call it the, the meta part that is the, the core parts that is needed for a so custom event. But how should we then version that meta schema, if we call it? And how should the custom event say which version of the meta schema have we used? You guess what I'm that's I'm not sure if I'm confusing myself. But... Yeah. Um that would come from the spec version because every spec version would yeah. come with a specific version of that meta schema. Mm, yeah. I think. For sure. Yeah. But we could then that, that's a good question. I mean we could add an extra field. Uh, but it risks becoming confusing i think too many versions <laughs> yeah maybe we should actually rename this to a spec version or something like not just version but yeah yeah i think we proposed that actually uh, yeah. i know this is the this is the cloud event um from them yeah so they the, are field. so cloud event yeah. requires a spec version well, yeah, I think the spec version is one of the required fields in a cloud event. And yeah. so what you're saying, Andre, is the version under context is um, the spec version and not the type version? Yes. So this is what 
how it works today for city events. So this is the city events back version. And this here is the event type version. Mm, interesting. That um so for me the type seems arbitrary because it's a string. Of course version's a string too, so yeah. Okay. I don't have a strong opinion on it, so other than spec version would be clearer. So the, one of the concerns I had, because I wasn't quite sure what version was, was if I update the version to 0 0.4.0, .0, do I have to update the type version to 0 .4 .0? Um And I could see those um, getting out of whack. I update the version of 0 .4 0.4.0 and I pick up links, but I'm still passing out the old type version. Um, that could be interesting. Um, well, links, um, th th that's a good point. So the, the links proposal will impact all event types because it changes what it changes how the context look like and the context mm -hmm. exists in all events. So that means that the, the structure of all events in the spec will be uh, changed. So when we introduce types, then uh, so we introduced links, all the event types will, will also get, all the event type versions will also get updated, if it makes sense. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, normally, if, if, yeah. If you look at the version as a spec version, then yeah, I could see that where every every event will go to uh, from 0 0.2.0, .0, right? Anyway. Yeah, but they are not necessarily aligned. So it's in in some versions we I don't know we make a small modification to one of the events and that that event get the version updated, but the other events wouldn't get the version updated, right? So um, the changes like links, so changes that change what is inside the context have an impact on all the events. And the other changes, like say we want to add one field in here in the content, yeah. that will only change the version of the specific event. Okay. Okay. Um, so as a next step, uh, I will update the 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 proposal then with uh, what we discussed, and if it makes sense, I can start preparing a PR with the changes on on the spec that would be required for this. I think it's from spec point of view. Hopefully, it's not too many changes. Um, so it's some text in the the markdowns and the schema to be introduced. And then maybe we can continue the discussion there. Okay. Um, so moving forward then, uh, if there is no other questions on this, um, I just wanted to mention about the uh, observability uh, sake. So the open telemetry CICD observability special interest group. Mm -hmm. Um, I've not watched the recording for um, last time, last meeting yet, um, but I found out where the recordings are. I was asking on Slack. So there is a spreadsheet with links to all the different recordings for the entire auto community. So I've not found this specific link yet, but it's in this spreadsheet somewhere. So hopefully after the meeting I can find the specific uh, link for last time meeting if people want to look at it and here is a link to the meeting notes as well and there is another meeting running now because it unfortunately it runs in parallel with this uh, meeting as well uh, but I plan on keeping an eye on the meeting notes and the recording 
and if the discussion gets to a point where we should be there, uh, then we, uh, yeah, we should try maybe to to split and some of us join the conversation. Okay. Um, any questions? For this. No. Yeah, 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 to comment, I think this <clears throat> the discussion there about CS0 observability is is already part of an existing SIG uh, meeting, right? So they deal with other matters on those meetings as well, I think. So I think what I understood is that they they have an idea to eventually break out the CS0 observability specific mm. discussions to a separate meeting. And that will hopefully not conflict. And maybe we can have a say there as well on what what time slot would be suitable for us. So, yes. So, so when we reach that, I guess that's when we will maybe talk more about the technical details of this, how how to really do it in practice. And, and maybe that's where we should really focus and be, be part of the discussions. Mm -hmm. I think now initially it might be more about starting up the actual work group and how, how things, how the group should work and those things, more administrative type stuff. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, they're um, hosted by the semantics working group right now. Um, so, and of course, one one of the topic is then the CI/CD semantics. Uh, but yeah, I I already um, mentioned on on their Slack that there is this um, conflict in terms of schedule. Um, so as you said, hopefully. When the meeting splits up, then we can find time it works for for both groups. Cool. Um, all right. Um, next I had the, the ticket proposal in the agenda. I don't know if there is any update to discuss in here. Yeah, Sean, would you like yeah, to? Yeah, hey, um I did make some updates. Um I mean I wouldn't mind discussing, but we we spent a considerable amount of time uh talking about it last meeting. I don't wanna Hog the rest of the meeting if there's anything else on the agenda. Um, well, the other two proposals that I had um, are things Ben is working on. Um, so I don't think we, we we can discuss them today unless he's able to join. Uh, and I don't know if anyone else has something they would like to discuss maybe before, and then we could dive into the ticket proposal. Okay, uh, sounds like that's the last thing. So I think Sean is perfectly okay cool. to spend the remaining time on looking into into this. Would you prefer to share a sc your screen or? Sure, I can share. Okay, let me stop sharing that. So you guys see the PR. Yeah, see it. Just try to find where we left off last time here. So I had a comment here um, from Emil uh, about the author here. So the intention of the author was to be like the author of the change. So I don't know if there's, uh, it is a little confusing when you look at it and just like the overall schema for the tickets, there's a, I think a creator and an author. So maybe we could rename this to something else. Is it rather updater than or something? Or, yeah, yeah that's a good word. Updated by. Uh, do we tend to use for like multi word strings? Is it underscores or camel case? Or do, you... do we have any? Um, camel case. Camel case and only. We, yeah. we, we, we had this discussion at some point and we put the recommendation in the in the spec about this. Let me find the link. 
Well, I've, I've done further research and we definitely went camel case almost everywhere previously, so. Thanks, Brad. We should probably fix places where it's not uh, compliant. Let's put the link to the spec. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. We had discussed last time about changing the string. So we wanted to have uh, for like the ticket types and I think a couple other fields like an enum, but also allow for custom um, types or custom strings. Uh, how did we want to denote that? So I changed it to, I think, string or enum. So yeah, um, is that how we want to denote that? And I yeah, didn't update the, the I scheme I was then yet. confused when I wrote my comment earlier today. So yeah, I thought we should have it as an enum, st enum string, but yeah, maybe you're right. We, sh we said we should actually uh, accept both, uh, even though that makes it, I mean, that makes the enum not very, not too useful because you could misspell it, of course, but yeah, I think we said, was it something in the JSON schema you could use like uh, any of or something like that in the schema? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yes. I didn't update the schema yet, but yeah. But that was still, I mean, it will still have the problem of not catching misspelling. Because if you have like a uh, bug in this case, uh, and you write, I don't know, bago with the O at the end, it will fit the string. <laughs> it would not fit the enum, but it will fit the string. But I think it's uh, what we discussed last time was that it's an acceptable compromise so that at least you can provide some uh, default values and allow people to have extra values. I mean, we, we lose the validation, but we, we gain in flexibility. So what would the, I mean, having those that syntax in the JSON schema, what, what would that really bring them? Is it that the SDKs for some, some way could see that enum as, and propose to the developer uh, or to the user to, to use one of these enums? Uh, because otherwise, it, it could be enough that the documentation says it should be as a string and then recommended values are, for example, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so what does it add to have it in the scheme already? Yeah, I think what you said could be an example and maybe okay. it makes it a bit more... Um, So if you, if you generate things out of the schema, like for proposing values, or if you want to create demo content, or you want to, yeah. So having those values there, I think it's, it, it helps so in maybe those also cases. Then the, the description here and the example should maybe be, be elaborated a bit. So it could say like, well, ticket type of course, but then, uh, any string, but for example, these values would be, I mean, if, if you use these examples, then most consumers would understand it. If you use any other strings, you're on your own and, and your consumers might not understand it. Maybe it's something, stating something like that. Is that, hmm. do you think that's valuable? So are we saying to get rid of the enum completely? And just stick with a string and have some suggested values. As we, Would as you said, actually we have several ticket types in one ticket? Not in one ticket. These would be different ticket so. types just in the system. You know, it could be a, a bug or an enhancement request or a, a question or an incident. The answer would be one of those, not two. Yes. Of those. Yep. Just one. Yeah, string is what I'm thinking here. Yeah, and then you can maybe say recommended values are 
uh, or and the schema could then have that enum with the recommended values in it. Maybe it could be enum or string rather than string or enum to put more focus on the enum or what switch. Yeah, or do we just have want to have it as a string in the in the documentation, but then in the schema say we have some enum for the recommended values. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can do that. I think. Yeah, I think Ben was a proponent of the enum for just consistency um, and interoperability. Yeah, actually, when we would eventually generate docs from the schemas or from some common format, we would like to distinguish this type of field towards pure pretext string fields, right? In some way. Yeah. And we would be able to do that when, when we parse the, the schemas or to parse that standardized format so maybe it's actually good to have a, a something a type i mean for better type here that says something else than just a string so maybe string reading is actually quite good <laughs> no. yeah yeah i was going to say maybe uh, uh let's i would put it as enum or string to put the stress in that yeah. enum yeah. is the preferred yeah, it's a small. So when we define this in the JSON schema, it's going to be uh, items type string and then enum one of these values, or what are we what are we saying? Yeah, I apologize. So I'm new to the doc. No, that's, that's all right. So uh, what we were discussing last time was we could use like an any of uh, and combine the enum with just plain string. So that allows us to say, well, these are values kind of that you can use, but if none of these values that we suggest uh, fit, then you can just put any string. Which in terms of validation, it gives you the same validation as just putting string. Um, but it, Gives it the advantage that if you like want to generate the docs or in, um, use uh, from the SDKs, you could have some, you know, uh, surface those default values. Okay. Kind of like a, um, uh, situationally, I'm using a core event. It's got to have one of these types to be a core event, or I've got a custom event, and now I'm not going to be strict on the ticket type name kind of thing, right? It doesn't have to be one of the enumerated. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out use cases where it's yeah. yeah. beneficial, but my brain only works on the, on the I'm coding this upside. I struggle with the uh, I'm reading the doc side. I guess the, the the initial proposal was to have one extra value called custom type, but it's probably still there. Um, but it, by allowing extra values to be there, we we enable then users to to actually capture this custom type rather than providing the string custom type by adding string to the schema. We allow users to actually put the, the actual value in there. Uh, so if okay. if neither bug nor announcement are, are valid, because many, many different ticketing systems have different uh, support, different types, so some support custom types to be defined as well, so. Yeah, uh, is there any value in having, I mean, I'm just trying to think if there's any value in having an enum there. Like, because we use two different ticketing systems and there's like no overlap in the, the types that they define. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe this is better. It's just a, a string. I mean, that, that, I that also. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, no, I think it depends on, on the use case you see with these events. I mean, if you see, see a use case where 
consumers of this event would behave differently depending on what ticket type it actually is. And if that should be a fixed, a different action, I mean, the differentiate it in a predeterministic way. I think it makes sense to have discrete values and then conform all the event producers to actually use those values, regardless of what their ticketing system or their system uses for their own sake. Uh, I mean, that's the, the thing with interoperability we talk about here. So that, to me, it makes sense to have at least recommended values here. Uh, but then for sure that they will not be the same in all systems. Uh, as you, when you look at the, those systems own GUIs or uh, look at the tickets or whatever themselves, yeah. But for interoperability's sake, it might be helpful to try to converge on some values. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So um, do we want to change it to enum or string then? Enum or string? Sounds good to me. Yeah. And do we have other values you'd like to see here besides like bug enhancement? I didn't. I think you had a couple of other values in the JSON schema okay. down there, uh, which might not then match with what you had currently there. And I also made a comment about that in the schema part. I'm not sure if any of those would be needed, but. Yeah, the... Um. Yeah. What's the best way to denote that there? That it could just be like a custom value. Yeah, I think my comment about the other there was before we had this discussion about oh, free text yeah. and the other, you know, So I think we can disregard that comment now. I mean, you could use you could actually just yeah. type your own type. But there you see there you have the enhancement and incident and question and those kinds of ticket types predefined yeah. their own line. So. Okay. Yeah. Just make the same recommendations in the documentation as we have as the enum values down there. Yeah. And the one other item I wanted to bring up. Uh... The group and assign the here. Uh, we had talked about whether to make this like an object or let's see what do we have now? Just a string for the group and then we have a string for the assignees. He said that this could be multiple people, which I agree. So we want to keep these separate, the group and the assignee. Or there was some discussion about combining those into an object, having like a group with multiple assignees. That's a strong opinion. I, uh, I don't know. I think as long as it provides some flexibility for the users of the protocol, it's it's fine. As if we don't limit the users too much. Uh, so I yeah, it's, I would yeah, say I get... they should be optional. In the in, if they should be there, they should be optional and easy to use. Um, so, so just a thought, maybe it's easier to, to have array of groups and array of assignees. I, I just wonder if we make an object and then we have a assignee associated with a group, then we might say, but actually an assignee could belong to multiple groups and then it becomes, and 
Yeah. And that way, within the object, it becomes maybe too, too much. Yeah. I think I agree. And I'm on board with the, uh, so we'll have an array of assignees. But for the group, I think it can only belong to one group at one time. So like the ticket's only going to be in one group. Is, do you disagree? Yeah. Can the ticket be assigned to more than one group at once? Well, yeah, I'm trying to apply this to like stuff we've done. Um, assignee is not plural. So I would expect to be a singular uh, um, uh, assignee and groups not plural. So I would expect it to be a singular group. So, yeah, the only thing I could think of with assignee is kind of like a pull request where I've requested five reviewers, right? But that's not an assignee. That's a, that's a different type of thing. I would say, like, off the top of my head that these two both remain singular and move on. <laughs> but there could be multiple assignees in GitHub, for example, in a pull request. Or an issue. Yeah, okay, then make a signee plural so that it's obvious that it's a mm. more yeah. than one person. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Okay, I'm just uh, for... I, I'm just looking at this for the first time, and like right off the top of my head, when I look at it, I'm, I'm when I'm going through data types like this, I immediately go, okay, is the word plural? Or is it not? And then we just went through this with uh, our project where we were like, well, if I search for an event and I only get the one event back, why do you want to bring back a list? And I'm like, because it could be 15 events later down the road. And if it's always a list, I don't have to try and figure out what data type it is when I get it into my program. I know it's a list, even if it's only a list of one. Um, and then if I want to make assumptions on my side, that it's always going to be singular, then I can do that. And it's my, you know, it's my problem when it breaks and it's not the the system's fault kind of thing. Just that's what ran th runs through my head when I see these type of values. So if we make them lists, I'm cool with that. Make it plural, make them both lists. And then, you know, it's my business on my side to rifle through the array and figure out what I'm doing with it. Um, so the only other opinion I have is when I look at it like now with assignee and group uh, singular, I feel that's restrictive. Like one of those needs to be plural is at least. So those are the only things I got to say. And I'm not asking you guys to change it. I'm just saying if you wanted, you know, off the top of my head, looking at this, like I'm reading this spec, trying to figure out how I'm going to use it. Those are the things that ran through my head. Yeah, but I agree as well. If they, if we should have a list of assignees and it should be plural assignees for sure. I say, so. yeah. Okay. And yeah, so for, for the group, Sean, I, I, I don't remember. I think maybe you're right. Last time we said it, it's actually only one. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure what, what the group actually is. Um, so it, if it's the project uh, kind of that the the ticket belongs to uh a kind of the the repository if it's very i don't know um it's probably one um, yeah. i think we had some discussion about github project last time uh, but maybe that can be considered an extra type not necessarily a group and we could just use the group for as the the repo in case of GitHub, and then it's just one. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Maybe the projects could be labels. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right, one last one. Got five minutes left. Uh, there's a comment from this morning. Uh, okay, so if the created event. You're saying you're expecting the same properties in the created event as in the or in the updated event as in the created event. So with the created event, we tried to capture, you know, all of the properties that one might want to look at. I guess when a ticket is created, and then the updated event, we just wanted to. We started with having like 
all of the properties and all of the events, but then we realize I don't think we really need them all. We just need to like capture what changed in the updated event. So that's the approach we went to. And so I guess to answer your question, um, the ticket type was changed from bug to feature. There's no dedicated field for that. So how the consumer understand it well enough? Um, I guess my question is, do they do they need to at that point? So like, just trying to think of how like we would use these events. And I think with the updated events, I mean, we're just like looking for a specific update, really. Like, say we want to make a change, we would take some action every time a ticket is moved to done. Every time it's resolved, so we're just looking for that that specific event. This is then is the those, status of changed but but if you would change the assignee for example or change the ticket type or some other field that we talked about now yeah that would also be so, an updated event but it will not use the same property field names as in the created event for the same type of data then because here is more of a free key value thingy right yes yes that is a good point uh through and from and to and there's no restriction on the namespace or the format of the neither from nor to two values either yes so it's very free so the if we have limitations in what what formats or syntax we would use for the properties when we create a ticket then we are free to actually change it to whatever because the schema doesn't restrict us in any way there we can change it to something that is not conformant to the properties in the created event but yeah. Yes, I see your point yeah. now. Yeah. I, I don't know if there is a way in JSON schema to express those constraints using this key value. There might be. Um but yeah, I mean for a certain key you should be have a separate format on the value or something like that. Uh, might be, but it would probably be quite clumsy, I think, in JSON. Mm. Um I would expect. But I yeah, think I'm it. thinking, shouldn't we be able to what well, is duplicate the, the created event and call it updated and, and and just have all fields of course as optional and you don't you just include the ones that have changed? Uh if that makes sense. Or do you think what's what are the drawbacks with that? Uh, with that approach you would not have the from a value, but I don't know if that was a hard requirement with a from value. If there was any yeah, specific yeah. use case that requires, I mean, um, I, I guess that the the updated event as it is today would allow us to to send updates about a field that is not defined in CD events because it's completely free in a form. Um, but I don't know if that was intention or not. And if if that was intention, then it probably makes sense to have the from value because you would not have it from the created event. Yeah, it is the intention. I didn't want to just limit it to the fields that we're capturing in CD events. Um, I wanted to be able to, you know, have events for anything that's changed. Um, okay. Yeah. Would, but would it can, make I, sense? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, but it makes sense then to to do what uh, Emil was proposing for the fields that we know of. So just to, you know, put the new value in those and use the this the array of key value for extra things that we don't know about. But, but I would that differ from custom data. That's more or less the same as the custom data we already have in the events, right? Yeah. But you don't have the from then, yeah. Sorry again. Yeah. Hmm. I'll think about this one some more. I think it would be good to describe the use cases when these would be needed, and then with those we could have an easier way to discuss uh, what would it should event look like when we see the use case for the consumers mostly, I guess, of these data. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna drop. Yeah, me too. Yep. But uh, okay. good discussion. Thanks, and good to see everyone. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. See you guys. See you next time. See you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.